So, this here is our 3D storyboard for a coffee machine commercial. Let me show you the process of modeling and animating the storyboard, filming all the shots in the studio and having a look at the finished film. Hi, my name is Frederick and I am a cinematographer based in Europe. We did this film with the coffee machine at the Hero Actor. With an approach of minimalistic light and set design, I used a 3D software planner to visualize the ideas and the finished film. So everybody knew the envisioned concept before the days of filming. Let's have a look at the approach of tackling such a project. My job on this has been the director and cinematographer. Fogelsanger Studios has been the production and head film agency, which is based in Germany. Ager, the creative director behind the project, has been developed the concept and had already great moods in mind to convey the minimalistic ideas of the set design and lighting. My goal has been then to summarize all the ideas and to make a kind of proof of concept of the film. And for that I'm a big fan of Blender. It's a freeware program which you can use for 3D modeling, animation, VFX, architecture and also for filmmaking. I'm using it especially for previous. It was clear from the beginning that we are going to shoot this in a studio environment to get the abstract room feeling. So I worked on the design of the rectangular elements, the different sizes and how the elements are facing each other. The main light would be coming from the top and also be integrated in the set design. It would stay in the same stylistic world like the other props below. It was the most crucial element to get a continuous light across the whole film. I think every cinematographer loves these overhead lights, which are part of the set design. I learned hard surface modeling the past years, which is essentially recreating elements from the real world, like furniture, props and things having hard edges. This helped me modeling the coffee machine in around 3 hours. I looked up pictures from the internet and also had the machine sent over to me, so I could model everything quite accordingly with the right measurements as well. It's like working with clay, forming each part of the object and after a while it looks more and more like the real device. As you can see, I gave the coffee machine the right texture with a metallic surface, the glass structure and also with the buttons and text. To display the various machines, I just changed the main colors of the panel. So, in the end, I could place the coffee machine on top of the middle rectangular element and get the first glimpse of the created world. The production house Vogelsanger Studios has a big compound of different studios for photography and filmmaking. I work closely with the executive producer Mark Hirscher, who had the lead on this project. His team sent me different pictures of the designated studio and also blueprints. So in the next step I could recreate the studio with the exact measurements. I put all the walls and ceilings right into place and moved this main set design elements in the best distance to the studio wall behind. Finally, I could also check the boundaries of what is possible in terms of setting up the camera and positioning the lights. For all the movements of the camera we used a special robot called Slim, which is a one-person operated system which can be transported in a normal car. You can use it also for location work very easily, because it's not so big like the regular robots on the market. In Blender I could experiment with every shot and try different angles and movements. The sensation of floating around the coffee machine was one of the main aspects of the concept and having the range of the robot in mind I could plan the film easily at home. For example, shots like this, going backwards through the middle of the machine, could be checked in 3D. You can type any camera lens into the settings of Blender like the probe lens we were using. Or this more elaborate top shot with rotating the camera in the center of the mug and then going up to our coffee machine. With the help of the 3D renderings and the previous film, Simon Krunewald, the robot operator, could program every shot accordingly. So, coming back to the light design. 
The main light is the box above the object which produces a soft overhead illumination and can also be seen by the camera itself. To build it, I made also descriptions of the exact dimensions so it looks identical to the 3D renderings. Our gaffer Quentin Federer put four Astera troops into the box so we could dial the color temperature and amount of light quite easily remote. A truss system with two stands on each side would then carry the box which was free hanging with metallic wires. The idea has been to put warmer light around and behind the object. So the light team could hang an aperture light with a softbox above our overhead element. It was so high that it wouldn't be visible in the wide angle shots. All the lights you can also put into Blender and play around. So I could see very soon that we need one light centered above the main set. For the beginning scene we aimed to create a silhouette of the coffee machine and as soon as the camera moves forward we dim the lights up. The camera movement and light changes you can animate in 3D as well. What also really helped me to determine how many shots we can plan has been the editing process beforehand. With the previous I could see where an additional shot would make sense or could be removed. A 15 seconds film is not long and therefore it helped me tremendously to see it before we are going to film it. So this has been our approach of creating a film in 3D and then getting everything done in the real world. Thank you for watching and see you next time on a film set. And never forget, it's good to be a nerd.